Well then, Bunny. Yes. It is time once again for us to open up our history textbooks and get our freaking learn on. Yeah. With yet another intellectually unintellectual installment of Steve's Historical Approximations. Now with 50% more deities. <laughs> Gotcha, Maxwell. This is a semi-quasi-occasionally somewhat regular-ish segment here on the old Pope on Film podcast, wherein I get a fairly unknown segment of history and rework it so that I can tell the story in my own unique voice. Yes. And as a result of that, the following story isn't 100% accurate because I have a tendency of putting quotes in people's mouths, but it's in the 92 to 99% range. If you would like to learn more about today's topic, just freaking Google it. <laughs> like, what the hell, right? And this time, Bella, 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 stop torturing your brother. Stop torturing your brother. If you're going to torture your brother, then he gets ac- he gets an equal amount of time to torture you back. It's just fair. No. No, that, it's, it, that's called a democracy. No. Where do you live? Communist Russia? Oh, well, I hear it's very cold. (laughs) And this time around, we are once again heading back to the Bible. All right. The gospel, the Stephen King novel of religious tomes. Yes. Specifically, we're talking lost gospels here. In fact, we're talking lost gospels again. Because we have discussed this topic before on the show. Yes, the Book of Mark, the I, secret Book of Mark. Yeah, it, it, it wasn't, I don't believe it was an official Steve historic, Steve's Historical Approximations, a S-H-A-P, a SHAP. Yes. As I, as I like to call it. It's not, it wasn't an official SHAP, but I made this one an official SHAP. So here's a refresher. If you don't remember this one story from our ridiculously ever-growing backstory. Yes. <laughs> there was a second version of the Gospel of Mark that was removed for uh, overt homoerotic undertones for realsies. It was known as the secret Gospel of Mark. Secret in that allegedly Mark had created two Gospels. One for the regular common pauper folk. Yeah. And one for the religious elite who could handle the mysteries of Jesus having a creepy semi-nude Michael Jackson sleepover with a young boy in the same bed. (laughs) Secret Gospel of Mark, it's an actual thing, look it up. Well, this time around, we're taking a look at young Jesus, specifically bratty toddler Jesus. Oh, yeah. See, the Bible is full of mysterious mysteries, including, but not limited to, doesn't the creation of the tree of knowledge and its placement inside the Garden of Eden, doesn't that constitute entrapment? Yes. Uh, The Bible has other mysteries. Who shot nice guy Eddie? Who are Ray's parents? If you melt dry ice, can you swim without getting wet? Many mysteries (laughs) in the Bible. And one of the most... The most... (laughs) of mysteries in the bible is what was jesus like as a kid because the bible shows his birth and then there's one story of him like when he's 12 preaching in the temple and then boom he's like 30 and he's got a posse yeah well there was a gospel that told the story of toddler jesus and it was removed for reasons that will become obvious obvious the gospel according uh, to thomas i believe actually uh, yeah 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 the the reasons will become obvious the reasons being the toddler jesus was a dick oh yeah oh yeah i i, I am i am familiar with these stories horrible horrible man and he was a dick because he was like i'm the son of fucking god yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And uh, and before we get into it, let's once again, for like the 30th time on this podcast, let's discuss uh, my main beef with Christianity. So Christianity, Christi- Christianity is a religion, and it uh-huh. is a religion based on a, a holy book, a holy tome, a gospel. 
Uh, no, no. There are some religions out there that aren't based on uh, a whole a holy writing. It's based on a man's film what? history yes. and about the, the type of life that that man lived. I don't believe that. Uh, you should, because uh, the person who you're sitting next to created it. What now? No. Bitch! Ricky Ticky Tabby, bitch! And that's the way the news goes. <laughs> so, it, it, it upsets me that there are Christians who don't know their Bible. Yes. They don't. I would think that if your entire religious belief, not not just your religious beliefs, but your entire life is is centered around being a Christian. I'm a Christian. I I, I believe in Jesus. I believe in God. Well, if it, it, your your belief in Jesus and your belief in God is 100 percent centered on this one book. So you would think that you would know about the history of this fucking book. Yeah. The things that are in the book, the things that have been taken out of it, the edits to it, the history of the book. You would think you would know that. <laughs> you, you, or, or at the very least, know the difference between the, the King James Version, the New King James Version, the Revised Standard Edition. The, <laughs> the There's a bunch of different uh, translations of the Bible, and modern Christians have no freaking idea what the difference is. So they're always opening up all of these uh, packages of Bibles and driving young, handsome, mustachioed booksellers insane. Yes. See, but you would think that people would know the history of these Bibles, but they don't. They absolutely do not. And it's remarkable that I know more about the history of the Bible than most modern American Christians. That's when you know something's True. wrong with your religion, dude. Yeah. So, okay. So, well, so well, well, you also know when you say the Earth is only six thousand years old and is fucking flat. Okay. Uh, so Bella has three Bibles here. Okay. Is it? Um, it's a Bible off. Yeah. Oh, that's that's okay. So. Some of the pages were sticky. Okay, so this one, this one here you got at Walmart, New Testament, Psalms, and Proverbs. This is this is a Gideon Bible. Uh-huh. That means didn't, so. you, didn't you find a Gideon? I remember didn't I, didn't you tell a story once you spotted a Gideon? I think so. So I believe. I don't know what translation this is. I believe it's just King James. This one here, the Holy Bible, this is just the New Testament. So this isn't everything. This is an English Standard Version. So I believe this is King James Version. This is English Standard Version. And then here on the side, this is a New International Version. The same book, different translations. Uh, I got, oh, I got, oh, I got something that, that. What, Maxwell? Got, I got something that. that you got what? That like that has this other forms of it. Oh yeah, what? Well, it's Pokemon. No, Digimon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Gotcha. You don't even know okay. Digimon or. So well, one of the new, so one of the numerous gospels that was removed over time was the infancy gospel of Thomas. And it was written by someone called Thomas, the Israelite yeah. who is either Judas Thomas or Jesus's brother. But apparently scholars were all who is the author of this gospel. Well, we're so not keeping it. So I guess it doesn't matter who wrote it. Yeah. Just screw it. Let's just go to the mall. You know, <laughs> doesn't it kind of feel like a mall day? Let's just, let's just go hang out at the mall. Mm hmm. So, the Infancy Gospel of Thomas was written around the 2nd century, and it was quickly labeled as dangerous, as a dangerous heretical work of fiction due primarily to the fact that toddler Jesus was an asshole. Oh my god, like, like just imagine Eleanor, imagine it, my youngest, she's like 8, 19 months old. Yeah. Now imagine if she had the powers of God. Yeah. So Eleanor's just walking around and she wakes up in the morning and, and uh, mommy's 
already gone to school and she's like nope and then suddenly mommy's like in the middle of driving and next thing you know she's back in bed with her boob hanging out <laughs> i was like thanks <laughs> it's like oh my god 70 percent of the time the entire family would be cats yes <laughs> Lord would just change us all to cats <laughs> Cats and dogs. And we'd be there like, well, Eleanor, sweetie, can you turn me into a human? I really need to go to the bathroom and I hate the litter box. <laughs> Mom, we just be talking this all the time. That I don't have a problem with, but that's a different story. So basically, that's the infancy gospel of Thomas. So I have some of my favorite passages here, right here to read to you. Uh, let me see. Where are they? Oh, no, I don't, they aren't screenshots, they're photographs. Okay. So here you go. All right. Uh, okay, Maxwell. Um, this is uh, the Infancy Gospel of Thomas, Chapter 2, verse uh, 1 through whenever I decide to stop. Yes. When this child Jesus was five years old, he was playing by the ford of a stream, and he gathered the flowing waters into pools and made them immediately pure, like you do. Yeah. These things he ordered simply by speaking a word. You know what he said, Bella? Abracadabra. You know what he said? Mm -mm. You don't know. I, I, I'm sorry. I, was, I, I thought you had heard. I thought everybody was aware that the bird is the word. Yes. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he then made some soft mud and fashioned 12 sparrows from it. Yes. It was the Sabbath when he did this. A number of other children were also playing with him. But when a certain Jew saw what Jesus had done while playing on the Sabbath, he left right away and reported this to his father, Joseph. Mm -hmm. Look, your child at the stream has taken mud and formed 12 sparrows. He has profaned the Sabbath. When Joseph came to the place and saw what had happened, he cried out to him, why are you doing what is forbidden on the Sabbath? But Jesus clapped his hands and cried to the sparrows, be gone. And the sparrows took off and uh, went off chirping. When the Jews saw this, they were amazed and they went away and reported to their leaders what they saw Jesus do. Um, okay. Now the son of, uh, Anas, the scribe, was standing there with Joseph, and he took a willow branch and scattered the water that Jesus had gathered. Jesus was irritated when he saw what had happened, and he said to him, You unrighteous, irreverent idiot! What did the pools of water do to harm you? See, now you will also be withered like a tree, and you will never bear leaves or root or fruit. Immediately that child was completely withered. Nice. Yeah, Jesus is fucking people up. Jesus left and returned to Joseph's house, but the parents of the withered child carried him away, mourning his lost youth. They were, they brought him to Joseph and began to accuse him. What kind of child do you have who does such things? So that was it always uh, comes down to that. It's really pretty fucking annoying if you ask yeah. me. Yeah. So that was chapter two and chapter three. So now we're on chapter four. Um this is my favorite. Somewhat later, he was going through the village, and a child ran up and banged into his shoulder. Yeah. This is also what happens at nightclubs in Sacramento, California. Jesus was aggravated and said to him, you will go no further on your way. And right away, the child fell down and died. <laughs> Yeah, five-year-old Jesus has just kill, killed a kid for banging into his shoulder. Yeah. That would make for a great, like, like high school Jesus. <laughs> and Jesus walking down the hallways into class and someone accidentally steps on his sandals. And he's like, oh, you're fucking dead. And literally just poof. Well, the one, the one that I am familiar with... Uh, I, I always picture Jesus as kind of Paul Rudd from Wet Hot American Summer. Oh. Yeah, he was hanging out on the yeah. roof of his house with a friend of his. You know, first off, great parenting, Joseph and Mary. Okay, you know? Who lets their kids play on the roof? Yeah. All right? 
But anyway, yeah. they're playing on the roof. They're doing whatever. Um, and he just shoves the kid off the roof. Yeah. And yeah. He, he falls off the roof and splat. And like um, <clears throat> Joseph and Mary and the kid's parents come out because apparently they were like playing bridge or something, I think. Uh, and they were all upset about the kid being the kid being dead. And he was like, you know, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the son of God. I, life and death come from me, you know. So, yeah, I, I can kill him. It's not a big deal. And they're like. But everybody was upset, so he was like, oh, all right, I'll bring him back to life. You know, and he brought the kid back to life, you know, after being like a big douche about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jesus was a dick. Yeah. Jesus was a huge dick. In my mind, see, in my mind, Jesus is um, Jim Carrey right when he gets the powers of God. And uh, uh, Bruce Almighty. So he's walking down the street, and that song from the '80s, "I Got the Power," yeah. is playing. And then someone bumps into him. You're dead. You know, being all. <laughs> what question did you ask, Bella? You said, "What are the what are Israelites? What are Israelites? Oh, that's it. Um, it like back a- in the day, there was a boy band called Isra. Yeah. So the fans of Isra. They were called Israelites. That doesn't answer me. No, your, that your father is completely lying to you. They are Jews that have more electrolytes. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. They're the magical thing that you get when you drink Gatorade. Yeah. Gatorade is filled <laughs> with these tiny things called electrolytes. And if I'm not mistaken, that's what, give a, that's what gives Jedis their power. I'm so confused. That was in the first... Star Wars prequel, and then they decided to just ignore it for all the other films. I saw the tears of the- yeah. So, right here on the Pope on Film podcast, a Bible mystery is solved. The question what was Jesus doing as a child? The answer straight up murdering people. Yeah. Basically, Jesus as a child was Q. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or like if Maxwell had superpowers. Oh, if yeah. Maxwell had superpowers, like number one, he would constantly be forcing all of us to play with him 24-7, and we would be going insane. We'd be like, I haven't slept for five days. Please, can we stop playing? Also, <laughs> the weather would always be like 75 degrees and sunny so that he can be outside. Uh-huh. Like all of the plants would wither and die because there would never be rain. <laughs> so that's it for this installment of Shap. Yeah. Steve's historical approximations. That feeling in your chest right now, that's love. That's what that is. It's a historical smattering. Yeah, it's a historical smattering or a stroke. A st- oh, ooh. Maybe a stroke. I kind of like myself a good historical stroke. Yeah. So cut on that. <laughs>